Week one of training camp is underway. We've seen three days of practice and we're looking forward to being at the bank tomorrow night with a lot of fans in the stands for that open stadium practice. Shelby Granath here with Garrett Downing and Ryan Mink. And guys, even though they're not out there in pads, they're not going full speed, we still have plenty of takeaways from these first three days. And I think one of the big ones is that position we've had circled for a few months now, that wide receiver battle. It hasn't disappointed yet, and it looks like those guys are having a lot of fun out there. Yeah, I think we all kind of, when there was announced that Lamar Jackson wouldn't be out here for the start of training camp and was going to go on the COVID list, I think that everyone kind of wondered, how is this going to affect the passing game early in training camp? Fair question when you lose your starting quarterback for the first for the start of camp. But I have been really impressed. Hollywood Brown had an excellent day on the first day. James Prochet was excellent on the second day. Then Sammy Watkins. It's kind of like every day is a different flavor. You know, today it was Sammy Watkins who had an excellent day. So I've been impressed with what we've seen so far from these receivers. And we had spent so much time, Shelby, like you mentioned, talking about whether this this receiving battle and how this is going to go into deep into training camp over the course of the preseason. And we're seeing that now. I think this is going to obviously be one to watch, and it's certainly starting on a high note. Yeah, I think that it's interesting with the wide receivers, Sammy Watkins, like you mentioned. He's a newcomer, and I've just been really impressed with his body of work in terms of being a big-bodied possession receiver, but also adding the big play element. You see that speed, you see the ability to move the chains, you see it all from Sammy, and, and still it's an issue of, is he going to stay healthy? That's the biggest question with Sammy Watkins, but golly, the talent is there. I mean, he just looks like a vet out there. This is year eight for him, and he even said the other day, you know, I'm finally starting to learn how to take care of my body, how to train, and so hopefully he can stay away from those injuries this year. You mentioned him quickly, but what about James Perchet? I mean, he is out there making plays. Special teams coordinator Chris Horton mentioned him today. I mean, he's just out there making plays. Well, he may have had come up with the best play training camp so far, that diving touchdown catch that he had earlier this week. And Perchet is in the middle of a competition to earn a spot on this team, but he has a really good ability, knack in the slot. I'll tell you this about him too. He's the first guy in the practice field every single day. He's putting in work on the jugs machine, and I think that that's paying off early in training camp. We mentioned Lamar hasn't been out there. That's giving Trace McSorley and Tyler Huntley a lot of opportunities that they wouldn't have otherwise. What have you seen out of those two? How's that backup quarterback position going? Well, I don't want to gloss over the fact that Lamar's not out there. That, that's a big deal. You know, I mean, this is your starting quarterback. The Ravens added a lot of weapons around him to help take this passing game to another level. And him not being out there really is a problem. Now, with that said, the fact that Trace McSorley and Tyler Huntley have stepped up is really a really good sign. You know, those guys were battling for that backup quarterback spot. and. Obviously, you don't ever want to see them on the field in the regular season, but the fact that they're coming out here and really leading an offense that typically in training camp, the offense is behind the defense. And I would say all three days so far, the offense has won the day. And that's pretty remarkable coming from your backup quarterbacks. So both of them have thrown the ball well with touch, the deep ball. I mean, it was an air raid the first couple of days. And day three, I thought that Trace really stood out with his accuracy. So I wouldn't say one has outshine the other one, but they've both been really good. Yeah, I wonder if the Ravens were to play a preseason game today, I don't know who would start between the two of them. Yeah. I, I really don't. I, I think it's a neck and neck battle I bet right Trace now. would probably get, get it as the more veteran yeah. guy, but I think the competition is really tight. I mean, it's been three days, and on 11 on 11, we haven't seen an interception yet. And that's, that's an incredible. Yeah, that's an indication of how well those guys are playing. Talking more about the defense, that pass rusher position is another one we had a lot of question marks around. Ravens have not added a vet there. What have you seen out of Adafe Owe and Dalen Hayes? Well, one of the reasons they may not have added a vet yet is because they really are excited about these young pass rushers. So Adafe Owe, the Ravens took him in the first round for a reason. They like his ability to get after the quarterback, and he flashed his athleticism today. Like, this was a day where he really shined. He came around the edge. Wink Martindale talked about his ability to kind of stuff both pieces of the option, the quarterback and the running back. I just... His athleticism jumps off the chart. I mean, running to the sideline, not many guys can run with Tyler Huntley. Tyler Huntley is <laughs> extremely fast. Yeah. And seeing Odafe Owe, how big is he? 6'4"? Yeah. I mean, he's a big man yeah. running to the sideline with Tyler Huntley and keeping up with him. Like, Tyler could feel him behind him. Yeah. That was really a display of his athleticism. And I think Dalen Hayes. Don't forget about him. I mean, he's a fifth-round pick, so you usually don't count on fifth-round picks doing a lot as a rookie. But he's got some polish to him. He's got speed off the edge. He's really quick into the flats. I think Dalen Hayes, if you're taking a bet on who gets the first sack of the season between those two rookies, 
I don't know that it's a given that it would be Odafe Owe. Yeah, and if he if Dalen Hayes continues to develop and play like he has over the course of these first few days of training camp, then the Ravens say, may say, you know what, maybe we don't need to add another veteran yeah. pass rusher, despite all of us talking about that over the past few months. Have there been any other young guys that have really stood out to you in these first three days? I think it's been those two and then James Prochet to me. I mean, yeah. those are the ones that, that jump out to me that are saying, oh, wow, like these are guys who are competing for either starting jobs or roster spots, depending on the situation. Uh, and they have kind of jumped off the charts to me. The other names I would toss out there, J.K. Dobbins, as a receiver, it, it's very clear that the Ravens want to get him more involved as a receiver, just in the flats, out of the backfield. I mean, in all different ways in this offense, they want to get J.K. Dobbins the ball, which is great for fantasy owners, uh, including myself. And, uh, and then I would say Justin Matabike. You know, he had a, a plat broke up a pass the line of scrimmage today, some pass rush stuff in the run. Uh, everything that we've heard about Justin Matabike being that breakout player on the de defense in his second year, we're seeing that on the field in training camp. It was neat to see today after practice, J.K. Dobbins went over and kind of, you can't engage with the fans too much, but he did go over, say hi, gave his gloves to a few younger fans. So it was really neat to see that out of that second year guy. And fans, we have loved having you out here at the Under Armour Performance Center. We are really looking forward to seeing you all at M&T Bank Stadium tomorrow night for the open practice. But if you can't make it, Training Camp Live presented by GEICO is back. We will be live and we will stream the entire two-hour practice from 6 to 8. So make sure you tune in. You can watch that on our website, our app, our YouTube channel, our Facebook page. Make sure you tune in. We'll all be there. We'll have a lot of great guests, so it should be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow night.